Hey guys, how's it going? It is Kyra here with another Diablo Immortal video. And in today's video, we're going to be starting episode two of the guide series here in Diablo Immortal. The first one was for Demon Hunter, so be sure to check that one out. And now we're going to be doing Barbarian. So how this works is we're going to be breaking down all of the top builds for the Barbarian class on all the people on the leaderboards and averaging out what the best people for that particular class use. First thing we're going to be talking about is the Legendary Essences. I think this is a great place to start to give you an idea of what the best skills to use are for the class so the first one here is going to be second breath sprint duration increased by 30 percent i think this one's pretty solid especially when you're doing overworld farming having that especially in combination with vithu's urges is just really nice to be able to extend that duration as much as possible so you're constantly going from camp to camp to get as much experience and loot as possible also we have lasting hate wrath of berserker duration increased by 30 percent this is the one i probably used the most when i was a barbarian it's just wrath of berserker is just such a good ability having it longer is fantastic so really good legendary would recommend the harder the content I do, the more likely I'm going to probably take something like this. And so here's a newer one right here. Taking damage during Undying Rage now triggers a counterattack for X amount of damage to all nearby enemies. Cannot occur more often than once every 0.5 seconds. So I think for this one, the damage is not crazy. So it's not going to be this big thing that's going to change the tide of battle in PvP. But I think this can be really effective in challenge rifts for Barbarians. Like I think that's one of the places where Barbarians really excel is just Undying Fury with in the challenge rift environment with whirlwind now when you actually get procced on undying rage especially if you're really punching up in a challenge rift having that extra bit of damage i think is really going to start to add up and especially if you have the four piece of grace of the flangelet set because then you're having another chance to proc that four piece here and i believe this guy he's using mount banks and vithus i think that's a good combo too and we'll get to the set items here in a moment but i really think grace of the flangelet with whirlwind you're gonna be procking a ton getting that extra damage there let's go on to the shoulders so hell's legacy this is a very popular one this one fits really well when you're open world farming too because sprint leaves a trail of flames dealing x amount of damage to enemies over four seconds so this one fantastic for being able to run through tagging a whole bunch of enemies there i like it also in challenge rift too because you get no unit collision when you have sprint going so when you're running through these big mobs of enemies and you have this extra bit of damage there pretty much the main thing you're going to be taking damage to in challenge rifts is the projectiles so you dodge the projectiles you're leaving the this trail of fire on the ground really great way to squeeze in a little bit of damage before you get like your whirlwind uh charge back up or something like that when you pull them all back in here we go we got a straightforward one right here for you this isn't just going to increase your whirlwind damage by 10 percent whirlwind's one of your best moves and more damage the better so this one's a very very popular one i've used this one a ton so here's an interesting one for the most part everyone's using the 10 percent increased damage to whirlwind this one's a one that's popped up and i can see why this one actually be pretty good this one's doom of the cowed activating wrath of berserker now immediately reduces the movement speed of all nearby enemies by 80 percent this is one of the newer legendaries that i didn't get a chance to use before i swapped off to another class but if this area of effect is actually pretty high that would be insane so it also depends on how long it's actually active for, but I could totally see that being pretty effective in PvP, assuming it's actually a pretty big circle there. Shoulders, not too much variance. Got Hell's Legacy. You got the Cyclone. So now let's go to the chest piece. This one's going to be by far the most popular one for Barbarians here. We got the Gathering. Whirlwind pulls in all enemies. It damages. I really like this effect too, because the cooldown on it, and pvp is very low so you can constantly kind of spam it they get a little out you can pull them back in pretty often and then in pve especially in hard pve scenarios it kind of staggers them just a little bit so you could pull them in and during that pull in animation it actually kind of makes it to where you're not going to be taking damage from them so you're pulling them in you're doing a ton of damage with your whirlwind there so everyone in the top five right now is using the gathering okay so here's an interesting one here we have five fresh claws whirlwind now shreds all armor increasing all damage enemies take by two percent stacking up to five times i think this can be actually really good i'm annoyed by the wording because it shreds armor but armor is an effect in the game here but it's it's giving you the effect of increasing all damage to enemies by two percent up to ten percent so i wish it didn't say that i wish it just like shreds defense or something like that something that doesn't exist as an actual stat in the game if you shreds armor then it's going to be giving yourself more critical hit damage so it's it's annoying that it, it does that, in my opinion, but whatever. Everyone's using that. I do think, as an honorable mention, Davin's Legacy is a great uh, legendary chess piece for the Barbarians because you you need to have it with the Remembered, but then you get two uh, Remembered uh, summons with you. And I liked it a lot in situations where I didn't, I only needed single target damage. So like Path of Blood would, would be a place where I would use that. Sprint now also increases the movement speed of all nearby allies. This one right here, I wish they would just buff it to where it just worked. 
where in your party of four, it doesn't matter where you're at in the party, you could just proc it and then everyone gets a speed boost. I really don't think that that would be too imbalanced in my opinion, but at the moment, it turns your sprint into this. You have an animation now and you have to pause to kind of roar, I guess. And then in the circle, I feel like the circle's a little slow or like the circle's not big enough in my opinion. And uh, when you're doing uh, dungeons, you have to make sure people load in. If they don't load in, then it doesn't even give them the effect, which is really annoying if you're trying to speed run through dungeons and everyone's loading speeds are all kind of different. So I'm on a computer, maybe someone's on a phone, I load in, I see them just waiting there, I give them the buff and then it doesn't even give them the buff. So also the AOE is a little too small in my opinion, but other than that, it's still a good effect. There is some things that are a little annoying about it that I wish they would adjust and or fix but the main one people are going to use you know let's see someone's going to have it right here screaming fury a merciless assault furious charge now charges to a location damages all nearby enemies and knocking them into the air maximum two charges so it what it does is it just drops you down from the three to two but it's a further range and when you reach that destination it knocks people up it's a little worse in pvp because pretty much everything knocks you out of it it's so annoying you could be mid dash like get the dash off and then last second any cc touches you like let's say you're dashing and then like knock back uh crusader uh gets on their horse and then you're gonna get canceled let's say you're a demon hunter and you have your wolves gonna knock you out of that super frustrating but is what it is i, w I wish they would give you priority I, I really think that you should have some kind of damage immunity or i've uh, been playing a lot of multiverses where you have super armor where that first hit it takes two hits to knock you out of it. So I wish there's something like that where it would take a hit to be able to knock you out of it, but it would make it to where barbarians can actually get in and do something. Whereas at the moment they don't, they, they, it's really frustrating that they're the melee class that has to get in, that gets no stat benefit for being the melee class. And then they have zero priority on their big dash in move. So it's a bummer, but this is probably the main legendary affects I would be using for um, my leg piece here. Amazing in PvE, amazing in PvP. It's just frustrating that it loses out on priority. So now let's go to the weapons. And this is going to be the most popular one by far in Eager Mailstorm. Whirlwind radius increase, but uh, whirlwind movement speed decrease. So it, it's a very noticeable effect on how much bigger it makes this. And paired with the gathering, this is just the bread and butter combo for barbarians. Okay, so to give you guys an idea, literally all of the top five is all using eager mailstorm but we have jkg brandon over here using stonefall hammer the ancients damage increased by 10 percent. this is something i would only ever really use if i was using the remembered i had devon's legacy here and then so you have the two piece there you have two summons out you have the stonefall and then it's going to make your um hammers of the ancient summon do more damage that'd be the only time i'd ever use this there is one i, f I forget the name of it it's one of the newer legendaries, not of this wave, but the first wave where in, it gives you extra damage as your frenzy procs. So you're going to be auto attacking a ton and then it's going to add even more damage on top of that. That's another single target legendary that I would totally recommend for the barbarian. But let's move on to the offhand because I think there's two main options for the offhand for barbarians here. And this is going to be the main popular one here in Broken Soul. Uh, Wrath of the Berserker now increases your critical hit chance instead of attack speed. I think this is absolutely amazing. Really good effect here. You're giving yourself like 50% critical hit chance. Critical hit chance is something that's very hard to come by unless you are a crusader, giving yourself banner, but everyone else, you know, tops, maybe gets like 21%, 24%. Like if you have all of this rolled critical hit chance. So very difficult stat to get and just giving yourself a ton of it fantastic but attack speed is still a good stat too because attack speed in this game gives yourself animation speed and as a barbarian having animation speed is incredibly important especially in pvp so don't sleep on not having that that effect because i really think attack speed is one of the most important effects in this game especially when you're facing people that have um attack speed slows so it kind of balances you out you're going really slow your animation is really slow you pop your wrath of the berserker without broken soul then it kind of balances you out and you can actually get your animations off or you can actually dash in and do your animations really fast because you know how we're complaining about how you get knocked out of everything when you try to jump in with your furious charge but if you have the attack speed you proc your attack speed steroid then jump in you're going to jump in so fast people might not be able to catch you in between so keep that in mind. And then in that case, you're essentially just not using a legendary because there's no skill that would really pair with it. Unless you're having Hammer the Ancients, then you're going to want the Remembered, but that's really a PvE uh, effect. 
And here, let's see if anyone's using the remembered here. Pretty much, I was just going, if I don't take Broken Soul, I'm just in, in a PvP environment. I'm just not taking an effect here. Here's another one. Enemies killed by Cleave will explode. I guess there's a Cleave build out there that you can potentially try, but I've never ran it. Literally, everyone's taking Broken Soul. This is probably the most popular effect for the most part, this is like the PVE effect I would totally take uh, for sure. So I get it. Not using it too much because for the most part, you're going to be in AOE scenarios. For the most part, you're going to be either open world farming or you're going to be taking on a ton of enemies or you want to kind of have a mix of mob, like, you know, kind of AOE. And then you get to the boss at the end. I think Broken Soul is going to be the main thing to use there. So I get it. Let's talk about set items that are going to be best for the Barbarian. So this is the main one that I would go for as a Barbarian for sure. It's going to be four piece Grace of the Flangelet. So you have the two piece, all continual damage, uh, channel damage and persistent ground damage increased by 50%. And then each time you deal damage to an individual enemy five times, you'll do x amount of additional damage to the enemy this is such a great effect especially with the amount of channel damage you can do as a barbarian with whirlwind you're going to be proccing this an absolute ton it hits a ton so that five times to an individual enemy is going to be super easy to be able to hit i was playing in the right uh against the shadow of this guy he was a wizard but he had this and the amount of damage that he was able to do is just absolutely insane like so this you really feel this effect your damage is going to skyrocket. It's so good. Let's see what he has as the two piece. It looks like, yeah. So this is just probably one of the best overall set items you could possibly get is going to be uh, Vithu's Urges. So increase the duration of beneficial effects on you and your party members by 30%. And then the four piece is fantastic too. I think this is a really popular one for Barbarian, especially if you're going to be in parties a ton. Increases the target's attack speed by 30% for three seconds each time you use a skill to grant a beneficial effect to yourself or a party member. And I have been seeing this a ton now, the six piece. Each time you use a skill to buff it yourself or a party member, you create an area of apothesis for 12 seconds and that grants 12% life drain. So I've just been noticing people have this. I probably wouldn't actually use this. I like the combination of four piece and then some kind of other two piece. I still think it's very good. For Barbarian, let's actually talk about, let's see if anyone has Mount Bank set because I think Mount Bank is gonna be a really good set for you. Before we get to that, let's talk about four piece Shell Boss here. We have the primary attack damage increased by 15%. For Barbarian, you have your Frenzy skill and this, you can do decent single target damage. I really think that you're, there's not enough content in this game that's going to be single target to justify really you bringing in barbarians and when it comes to single target damage i think other classes do it better like maybe ne necromancer probably wizard um but it still is fine to have especially if you just like playing barbarian you want to do a lot of single target damage and then your primary attacks gradually increase your attack speed up to a maximum of 25 percent so i think that's a very good effect especially on barbarian so this guy's going six piece shot boss so this is going to be a ton of attack speed you're going to be attacking an absolute like he's gonna be crazy and so this guy's taking four piece fifth use i think this is gonna be a fantastic set for barbarian and so here is mount banks i had to go on mine no one in the top's using this currently on my server but for pvp specifically i think this can actually be a pretty insane set for barbarian the main thing is giving yourself a shield but cool thing about it is only on a nine second cooldown so each time you take damage you have a 20 percent chance to gain a shield that absorbs damage equal to 13 percent of your maximum life so the, the more you spend the better this effect is going to be but i do think this even for light spenders this is still going to be pretty good and then it gets bumped up to 33 percent when you have the shield on a four piece and then the six piece here your shield has a 25 percent chance when it expires to explode for 40 percent of your maximum life so even when it like, let's say it procs finally at the last little bit of your shield it's still going to do the full damage it just needs to you know, you're going to have the 20% uh, chance to make the shield. And then when you have the shield, you have a 25% chance uh, when it expires to explode. A couple factors of RNG there, but when it does, it's going to do a ton of damage and the shield proccing every nine seconds. Most internal cooldowns are 20 seconds. So I, I really think this is going to be a massive difference in your survivability when uh, using the Barbarian, especially in longer engagements, because essentially it's just stacking on another 33% as the engagement goes. So you can kite it out and then get that nine seconds, stay in combat, make them stay in combat. You keep kiting it out and you're essentially just increasing your life where they're not able to. So very good set there. So let's talk about legendary gems. So the first one I want to talk about is going to be Phoenix Ashes, because I think Phoenix Ashes, this is one of the few classes where it actually works as you'd want it to work. So you have Undying Fury, where or Undying Rage. Enter a rage for four seconds that prevents you from dying and causes all your attacks to heal you. So this is one of the main uh, skills on this kit, obviously when it comes to Barbarian. But what's cool about this interaction here is this saves you on a 30 second cooldown, whereas this would also save you, but you don't get any invulnerability when it would save you with Phoenix Ashes. So 
prevents fatal damage and then grants you a shield for six seconds. But the big issue with Phoenix Ashes is you get no invulnerability. So if you're getting nuked, they can just nuke through your shield immediately and you just die. Where what's cool about this is that you have the Undying Rage, but it doesn't proc at the same time. Like, let's say you're both in both scenarios, you're about to die, but you have Undying Rage, you're about to die, but it doesn't proc your Phoenix Ashes, which is great because this is a very long uh, built-in cooldown. So 180 seconds, whereas this is only 30 seconds. You get to down to one life, you survive due to Undying Rage, you can heal back up. Then if you were to die within that 30 second window, then your Phoenix Ashes proc. So I think this is one of the, the best classes to have Phoenix Ashes on. I, th I think this is a great, you know, legendary uh, gem here. Not one of the best, but it's still okay and actually pretty good on a Barbarian because it, it really works to that favor there. And then uh, if you get out, you have a big shield, you can heal back up. Hopefully you survive until Undying Rage happens again, then you can heal back up there with Life Steal. So it works really well there. One thing that I don't like about Barbarian is on the Paragon, it, it's a bummer here that on the, the Gladiator Tree, that it looks like Undying Rage and Cheat Death kind of overlap. And so you're stuck. You kind of CC yourself there. So I think that's a bummer. We'll get into the Paragon Trees here in a second. This is going to be the main one. And for the most part, these are going to be the top Legendary Gems. I just really want to highlight this on Legendary Gems. I don't want to get too far into the Legendary Gems on this because for the most part, the best ones are going to be... You, you have the Bloodsuck Jade. You have Seeping Bile. All amazing. Uh, definitely Blessing of the Worthy is better on a melee class than it would be on a ranged class. This uh, Howler's Call is still really good. Battle of Hope is probably going to be one of the absolute top tier legendary gems you can have on a Barbarian. I would say the top three are going to be Bottled Hope, Bloodsoak Jade, Seeping Bile. Then everything else is kind of on a tier below. And then for some of the, you know, not as super whale friendly, you know, like the, the more free to play friendly gems here. I would go Fervent Fang. Um, Bloody Reach obviously is not going to be used at all. Berserker's Eye is amazing. A big one that is not commonly used, but one that's going to be really good is going to be Trickshot Gem. This is fantastic on Barbarian. Power and Command is really good too. And that's pretty much it. You know, Chip of Sunflesh doesn't really work too well on Barbarian. You don't really cause loss of control. It's even on the, the Whirlwind portion, you would you would think it would, but it doesn't. So it's not that good. Uh, Echoing Shade is not really that good on Barbarian and Swinson's Haunting is not just not that good of a gem. So let's talk about Paragon Trees because for the most for most classes, there's a pretty standard version you want to go. Whereas when it comes to Barbarian, I think they're a little different in the sense that there's one class that might actually get hampered by choosing Cheat Death. Because I would say for pretty much every class in the game, in PvP, you're going to want to have the 63 points in the gladiator so you could get cheat death here and then you since you're here you might as well get the the life and the damage what happens on the barbarian is fatal attacks from players instead reduce you to one life while making you immune to damage and stunning you for three seconds so see how it's stunning you for those three seconds there whereas barbarian is the only class that has undying fury or undying rage so they're stuck um so what happens is it procs at the same time which is really frustrating. And you have the really good interaction between Phoenix Ashes and Undying Rage. This procs you're stuck, whereas with Undying Rage, you have life steal. So you want to spin on them. You want to actually go. Whereas you're stuck here for the, and you, yes, you do get the 60% life back. It's just not that good. I would say Barbarian is one of the few classes where you could just forgo going so far into Gladiator. You, you could get the other stuff because I really think this is good. You know, like this is just amazing. Uncontrollable is such a good effect. When struck by an effect with causes less of control for your character, you are, are immune. Cannot occur more often than once every 30 seconds. Also, quick witted is really good. Reduces the duration of loss of control effects against you by 10%. So really good effects there. Also, because you're in the class, rapid recovery is probably going to be amazing for you. Reduces the cooldown of Trapper and Uncontrollable by 10%. So this is only going to be on a 20 second cooldown. There's a lot of merits to going deep into Gladiator. It just might be going here. Whereas what you could do is make your active tree um, survivor because you do get a lot of benefits here where you get the uh, unyielding, you get escape artist, stalwart, you know, precognition, stuff like that. So it, there is a potential difference here. Whereas this one is, you know, fatal attacks from monsters. So you're obviously not going to take that. It, it is an option here uh, to do something along those lines, you know, and you maybe even want to go crazy with soldier, but I don't think this is that good of a tree. But for the most part, people go and then it would be 58 points in the survivor to get the damage down here if you want the damage that could be something that you end up doing or you just have a ton of points in the glider just like everyone else instead um you're going to be trying to get rapid recovery so you could get that effect a ton so that that is probably going to be the main move but it's just one thing i want to talk about here where it's the only class that actually gets kind of you know there it's not great that the interaction is really not that great but all the other stuff that's standard in my opinion you're going to want 21 points in the treasure hunter here so you could get the damage here um, and then 31 into Vanquisher and 31 into Soldier. 
so you get the damage here. And then Mastermind's a little different because you could get all the damage here earlier with only um, how much? 28 points. Notice I only have one point into uh, armor penetration here, but I can still go through uh, where it's one of the few places in the game that actually allows you to do that, which is bizarre, but you can. And then now, you, boom, there's another 400 damage there. So I think that's going to be the standard there. One thing to keep in mind is mainly going to be this interaction with Gladiator. And then going from there, do you want to get the life uh, on Vanquisher? Uh, it's just really going to be prioritizing what you actually play the most. But having that foundation of a ton of damage, I think, is, is fantastic for all classes. So let's just quickly go through the top five here. So we have 63 Gladiator, 51 Vanquisher, 21 Treasure Hunter, 31 Soldier, and 28 Mastermind. And then we have 45 Vanquisher. So we, it, pretty much everything's the same, but he focused a lot more on Vanquisher here. So 21 Treasure Hunter, 63 Gladiator, 31 Soldier, and 28 Mastermind. He went to 74 Gladiator, so I believe he's going for that extra cooldown reduction there. 33 and Mastermind here. Nothing into Survivor, nothing into Soldier. That's the trade-off he made. 54 Vanquisher, 24 Treasure Hunter, Gladiator. Nothing in Soldier, nothing in Mastermind. So to get higher in Vanquisher and a little bit more into Treasure Hunter, but mainly all of it into Vanquisher there. So... That's pretty much going to be the common split there. As for normal gems, pretty much everyone is going these right here. So you have the, the damage in the red spots, mostly potency on the yellow, and armor pin on the blue. So he's he's actually went way into armor as well. But you got to take him with a grain of salt because he's a massive whale. So over here, ton of armor pin, ton of damage, ton of potency. It's all very standard. This is pretty much what everyone is taken here so that's going to be pretty much it for the barbarian guide here let me know in the comments below what you guys think and with that guys i'm out of here peace